So now that we discuss sequences, let's now talk about series, which are just infinite sums of sequences. And more precisely, what would it mean for a series to converge? So in other words, the series n from 0 to infinity of a n uh, equals s if and only if what happens. So the problem is this is a series. We don't know limits of series, but we do know limits of sequences. So it would be nice if we could associate a sequence to this series, and we can using what are called partial sums. So this series converges if and only if the sequence uh, a0 plus a1 plus dot 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 plus a n, which is just the sum from k from 0 to n of a k. Now, this is a sequence depending on n. And the point is, this converges if and only if this sequence converges to n. And again, this we know how to handle this a priori, we don't. And in particular, let me give you an example illustrating this. So there's this classical geometric series the sum from n from 0 to infinity of uh, 1 half to the n, which is 1 plus 1 half plus 1 quarter plus dot dot dot. The question is, what is the value of this series? Well, let's look at the partial sums. So Sn, which is the sum from k from 0 to n of 1 half to the k which is 1 minus 1 half to the n plus 1. So you can explicitly calculate that. And now the question is, what happens to the sequence if you let n go to infinity? Well, this becomes 1 minus 0, so 1, over 1 minus 1 half, which gives you 2. So because Sn goes to 2, we can legitimately say uh, the geometric series goes to 2 as well. Now, in general, it is very hard to figure out the exact value of a series, but instead, let's just solve an easier problem. Instead of determining s, let's just ask ourselves, when does a series converge? So when does the limit of this sequence exist? And luckily, there are much easier tests to figure that out. So first of all, one thing I want to mention, because it's usually told in calculus, but you usually don't have an idea why it's true, but usually in calculus they say, well, just determine if the series is finite. Why is that true? So first of all, fact, if, let's say, an is greater or equal to zero, and the series is bounded, then it converges. And the reason is, it's precisely because of the monotone sequence theorem. Because what is Sn? Well, it's a0 plus a1 plus a2 up to an. And the point is that every point, you're just adding uh, more and more non-negative terms. So definitely, the sequence of partial sums is increasing. So, and moreover, if it's bounded, then um, Sn converges by the monotone sequence theorem, and therefore the series converges. That's why to check if a series converges, you just need to check that it's bounded. So that's why calculus works in some sense. And here's another fact that is very useful uh, to prove a bunch of convergence tests, which is the Cauchy criterion, which says that um, a sequence converges if and only if its tails are arbitrarily small. And what does that mean? It means that for all epsilon, maybe let me write this here, if and only if for all epsilon, there is some threshold, capital N, such that if uh, let's say n is greater or equal to m is greater than capital N, then the sum from m to n is arbitrarily small. The 
sum from k from n to n of a a k is less than epsilon. So let me illustrate this. Suppose you have a series, at least suppose you have a sequence. Okay. So a0, a1. Then this series converges if and only if, uh, no matter how small the error, there is some threshold capital N such that after this threshold, the tails of the series, so let's say the sum from AM to AN, is uh, arbitrarily small, less than epsilon. Um, and the nice thing is, again, this does not mention any, any uh, values of the series or anything. So it's a nice way of dealing with convergence without mentioning the limit. But of course, there are then more easier ways of testing for convergence, which I just mentioned now. Of course, the proofs are in the videos. First of all, there's a divergence test which simply says that if, a, if the sequence doesn't go to zero, then the series diverges. Then there's a comparison test, which says that if uh, a series AN is less than or equal to a convergent series, then it converges. Again, at least non-negative, let's say. And then, um, then there are the two like siblings, what I call the ratio test and the root test. And the ratio test has to do with uh, successive terms. You look at a n plus one over a n. Okay. And the problem is this limit doesn't always exist, but we can always take the limb soup. So if the limb sub of that, let's say, is alpha, if alpha is less than 1, then the series converges. If it's greater than 1, then it diverges. If it's 1, we don't know. And same thing here with limb sup. n goes to infinity of the nth root. Again, if it's less than 1, it converges. If it's greater than 1, it diverges. Else, we don't know. And again, we take the limb sup because we don't know what the limit is. And then there's also the integral test, okay, which has this amazing consequence that the P series converges if and only if P is greater than 1. And last but not least, the alternating series test, which has to do with alternating series, so series of the form minus 1 to the n times a n. So for instance, 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third, etc., etc. And the nice thing is this always converges provided an is decreasing and goes to zero. So very easy test. All right, thank you.